pleased to present Austin Faith Dialogue, brought to you by the Austin Metropolitan Ministries. In the weeks ahead, you will see these and other programs by various denominations. Welcome to Austin Faith Dialogue. Today's topic of discussion is the alternative trade organization movement. Please join us. This is Austin Faith Dialogue, a public affairs program discussing the important crossroad of religion in life, produced by Austin Metropolitan Ministries in cooperation with KTBC-TV. Austin Faith Dialogue highlights the interaction of the religious community with the social and cultural issues throughout our area. Now, today's edition of Austin Faith Dialogue. I'm Sandy Wilder, your host for today's Austin Faith Dialogue. Today we're discussing the whole alternative trade organization movement. Our own Austin Metropolitan Ministries is the sponsor of one of these organizations. It's known as the International Holiday Market. The concept is simple. Seek out artists and craftspeople from poor and underdeveloped areas of our own country and foreign countries, sell their products on consignment, and return the profits to these producers. It's a unique idea, but one that's making a real difference. It's also another way for the faith community to reach out and help improve the lives of others. Our guest today is Kathy Reed, pastor of the Austin Mennonite Church and a driving force behind the international holiday market. Kathy, welcome to the program. It's good to have you here to talk about this whole movement. Would you, so that our listeners today know something about the background behind the holiday market, describe something about what alternative trade organizations are, how they got started, what kind of difference they're making? Well, an alternative trade organization is an organization that chooses to import or bring f products from the United States even to consumers uh, in a little different style than normal trade happens. Um, in, in a normal trade situation, you look for the cheapest labor force you can find uh, so that you increase the profit margin for the person who's actually importing or bringing that item in. These are just the opposite of that. Uh, the idea is that you give as much of the profit to the person who actually makes the craft in order to improve their economic situation, to improve their shelter, housing, food, money that they have available for their life. Uh, one of the organizations that we work with at the International Holiday Market, to be real specific, is Self Help, which is uh, sponsored by the Mennonite Church. And it started when a woman went to Puerto Rico and saw a sewing class. Uh, the women were doing beautiful embroidery and decided that she could help these women out if she simply just brought the embroidery, the products that they were doing, back to Lancaster, Pennsylvania and would sell it there. Um, and she did that for years out of her basement, just bringing that, adding Haitian wood and some other uh, specific areas that Mennonites were working, uh, bringing that back. Serve, which is a Church of the Brethren alternative trade organization, started after World War II, trying to help people in Europe who were devastated by the war uh, bring products, handcrafted items, and, and get a fair and just wage for it. I would imagine that over the years these organizations have, have grown. What countries or areas are they working with now, these alternative trade organizations? Well, you can get products from all over the world. Self-Help works with 35 different countries and approximately 35,000 different individual local artists uh, in making some kind of product. So that's pretty worldwide. Um, the thing that's really interesting to me is that th there's lots of effects by doing this. One is that um, we think that the person who makes the product uh, makes twice as much money by selling their product through one of these alternative trade organizations as they would if they were simply working for an import-export kind of company that was looking to pay them the lower wage. And one of the interesting things is, is that although alternative trade organizations seem small compared to the huge import-export kind of trading that goes on in our country, is that one of the side effects we're finding of the alternate trade organizations is that in communities where an alternative trade organization is paying an artist uh, twice what they would normally receive for their product, it raises the economic base for not just the people that are trading with the alternative trade organization, but the profit trading 
organizations have to increase their base too in order to be competitive so with how, it. How do so there's kind of a ripple effect in terms of the economics that happen in a local mm -hmm. community where artists band together to um, produce goods for an alternative trade organization. I'm sure lots of folks would jump in with questions now. So how do these alternative trade organizations manage then? Because certainly the importing and exporting business is expensive. It costs uh, time, labor, all that. How do these organizations manage then to make such a significant economic difference in the communities where they're working? Well, I know that for self-help that happens a lot because we use a lot of volunteer help. Um, what I understand is that when you pay a certain amount for that item, one third of the amount you're paying goes back to the local artist. And the other two thirds actually are customs, import fees, uh, postage uh, handling here in the United States. Now that sounds like a, a very small amount actually going back to the artist, but, but it's really much more than they get in a, in a normal ordinary trade organization um, but so much of the work is done in terms of shipping and handling uh, with volunteers mm -hmm. that those aren't people that are paid and those are all significant um, positions that in a normal trade operation you would pay, by paying those people you would increase the price what's interesting is that at the holiday market we're able to have handcrafted goods quite a bit cheaper than you would find at a normal trade at a retail store mm -hmm. and yet we're still able to pay the the local artists twice as much as they normally get hmm. Obviously. so it's a bargain for us local shoppers right. as well as it's also doing choosing where you're where you're uh, spending your dollar mm -hmm. So obviously cutting out the middle people in this whole trade movement has really made a difference. So tell us something about, you've, you've mentioned the international holiday market as, as a local uh, representation, if you will, of the work of an alternative trade organization. But what is this, this market and um, who is it that's, that's working on this? Well, the international holiday market started about 12 years ago in the United Methodist Church, uh, mm -hmm. where someone got the idea of having a, a one-day event uh, in the holiday season before Christmas. Um, I think originally it was called even the International Christmas Market because it was geared towards Christmas um, to give shoppers in Austin a chance to do exactly that, choose to purchase these handcrafted items uh, to, to intentionally buy gifts, handmade gifts um, for people where, they, where the money went back to the person who did it. Um, and over the 12 years, this market has grown and, and has moved from just being a local United Methodist event to being actually one of the, the programs that Austin Metropolitan Ministry sponsors. Um, we intentionally try to move it to a different church each year. This last year, it was in, at First Presbyterian Church, but it's been in United Methodist churches and Lutheran churches and a variety of different denominations participate to make this event happen. Church uh, Women United is active in 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 this mm -hmm. event and so we all get together for a once a year event now the events grown past one day uh, usually it's a Friday and a Saturday mm -hmm. and uh, we probably have several hundred volunteers that that mm -hmm. unpack the goods that come in we order thousands of dollars worth of goods and unpack the goods set them in displays run this market for a two-day period uh, everything we have is purchased on consignment so what isn't sold gets sent back and is is sold someplace else I mean, it gives Austin shoppers a chance to purchase holiday items um, we have a real international flavor there and uh, part of being part of Austin Metropolitan Ministries is we have a very ecumenical interreligious feel to it with the Jewish community being involved and this year we had a lot of works from um, the Palestinian uh, people and great support from Palestinians. We even had some people from the Muslim community helping us with the holiday market. So we have a real uh, interfaith event in which we all participate together to make that uh, weekend a special kind of weekend and give this kind of opportunity. And do you know why it's a, it's a holiday market? Because certainly people buy things at other times of the year, but, but why holiday particularly? Well, I think that we find that that's a great time for people to, uh, uh, in this day of age of consumerism, where everybody it feels like uh, the emphasis is maybe more, much more than we want it to be on Santa Claus and, and 
and how you decorate your house. I think people of faith are looking for responsible ways to invest their dollars and also to give a personal gift. Um, the items at the holiday market, because they're handcrafted in, in mostly third world nations, um, f are unique. Um, you can find wonderful carvings and needlework and, and all kinds of unique gifts that maybe you can't find just going to your local mall. Well, I'm, I'm intrigued. What kind of uh, items are there at this market? Well, just all kinds of things. We've got tablecloths, embroidered tablecloths from, from Palestine. We have masks from Africa, um, lots of Christmas ornaments. We do a lot of uh, nativity scenes, handcrafted nativity scenes from all over the world. Uh, practical stuff, baskets from everywhere you can imagine, Indonesia and the Philippines and, and uh, all over the world baskets. Just a variety of handcrafted goods. One of the new things about the market this year is that uh, in 1993 we invited a new project at the Friendship Community Center here mm -hmm. in Austin, which is a new cooperative that's forming of, of women here to find ways to market their handcrafted goods at our own market. So we didn't have to just rely on third world nations, but we invited some local artists to do the same thing so with our market. If, if someone comes to buy a gift, and I assume lots of people do uh, since the event's 12 years old, if someone comes to buy an item, then what? Uh, they could probably buy those same kinds of items, say, at an import store, uh, perhaps at a different price, but a similar item. What, what difference does it make? Um, what does the market committee do, for instance, to help shoppers understand what is happening with their money? Well, I think education is a big part of this event, too. We, this year we had uh, booths that uh, display from different parts of the world that kind of showed some of the locations and gave information. A lot of the items come with little cards that describe the, the community or the people who made the item. Um, I think that a shopper at the International Holiday Market has the assurance that the, the steering committee has screened all the organizations, uh, and it's organizations, it's not individual artists, but organizations screen them to make sure that they do in fact uh, meet the criteria of really helping the economic welfare of of an impoverished group of people or an impoverished nation and so it's it's you have the insurance as a shopper that your dollars really going where you want it to and I find it's just fun uh, you know to pick up an item and turn it over almost every item has marked what country it comes from um, some of the items that we have maps for or displays that that show the exact location and it, sometimes to even know who the artist was that made the particular item um, adds a little bit of the a personal I think towards the the Christmas gift that I'm planning to give so you find that, that people are intrigued with the good prices and with knowing that their, their holiday shopping money is making a difference. So who comes? Who, well, who is attracted to this kind of event? It, it's interesting. Over the 12 years, of course, we've developed quite a clientele there of people who are interested in the holiday market. People of faith in general. I mean, most of the people come to this because they're involved in some church, and we do most of our publicity through the church. But we also just have uh, folks who are interested in in really uh, being careful about how they spend their money, um, who are interested in the justice side mm -hmm. of this market, that want that kind of assurance that their, their money's really going to help someone economically somewhere in the world. And so there's a, a, a lot of people who are interested in peace and justice issues, who seek out the holiday market as a place to do their Christmas shopping. And we get people who just sort of stumble upon it, who have no idea exactly until they walk through the door that this is different than any church bazaar perhaps um, until they get there and they start to see the merchandise and read the educational material they think it's just a a cheap way of picking up wonderful goods mm -hmm. um, part of our our goal is to educate them that this is more than just finding an item and selling it cheaply this is a way to economically empower people in the world who don't have a lot of economic power. And I think our motivation for it is different than just a church bazaar where you raise money to, uh, to help meet the end of the year budget. Our, our motivation in the market is to really do something to help the betterment of other people who are less fortunate than we are. 
12 years has obviously made a big difference then in the Austin area and in, uh, we hope, many households around the world with the holiday market. Thank you for talking with us about the international holiday market and the whole movement that it's part of. We'll take a short break now. We'll be back in just a moment with Stuart McIntyre to talk of, to us about the alternate gift market, which is a different sort of movement. Please stay with us. Serving Austin means serving you. That has always been the primary goal of Austin Metropolitan Ministries. We are religion in action through the work of these organizations. Each plays a key role in making the capital city a better place to live, but we can't do it alone. Do you have some spare time, talents, or any resources that you can share? If you do, please call AMM at 472-7627 because serving Austin means serving you. Welcome back to Austin Faith Dialogue. Our guest is Stuart McIntyre of University Presbyterian Church, and we're discussing the alternate gift market program, that whole philosophy. Good to have you, Stuart. Tell us a little something about what the whole alternate gift market philosophy is. It may not be familiar to people watching today. Well, it started in 1980. Uh, Harriet Prichter uh, decided that she wanted to get her children and her ministry involved in trying to not be so materialistic about Christmas, but trying to just have a Christmas where the different people of the world could profit or not profit, but could benefit from their uh, Christmas time. So they decided to organize some fundraising things where the children could uh, get other people involved and get other people to benefit from the money they could raise at Christmas time and so they developed this organization it's grown through the years they decided in 1986 to develop the alternative gift market uh, and get it going as an actual organization and they incorporated it at that point and so it's gone worldwide with regards to the people that benefit from it as well as the people that are getting involved in it have gone nationwide uh, they now uh, distribute the funds all over the world to different people. So it was one woman's effort in a local church then? Correct. To... And she still runs it. Great. She still runs it. Okay, living out her, her philosophy, her, her faith beliefs, I guess. Exactly. Right? exactly. So describe to us then how an alternate gift market works. Gift market conjures up visions of someone going and choosing an item, wrapping it up, giving it to the recipient, but I don't think the alternate gift market is no, like that. No, it does not. There's not any real material thing that you actually receive. What it is, is you go to the markets and there's an educational aspect of it. At the markets, the different organizations put these on and they organize uh, displays that show the different people of the world that receive these funds and they allow the people that are purchasing these gifts of say eye surgery for children mm -hmm. and uh, milking cows for for poor farmers that cannot replenish their farms and things like that and they um, educate the public with regards to these items then you have a shopping list that you have that you go down and you can choose what items you would like at the very bottom of the shopping list is a two dollar added fee and that's how the organization covers its administrative costs that's the entire amount that you are charged so that a hundred percent of your donation goes to the p people that are to receive it and then you are given a Christmas card and in that Christmas card is a description of the item 
item that you have actually purchased to go to the recipient of your choice, the, the relative, the school teacher, the, uh, the, the person that has everything that doesn't need another object in their life. And so that explains to them what they are being given. And so both people benefit. You have the warmth of knowing that your gift is going directly to these people as well as the fact that a recipient of your card also has the joint responsibility of receiving that and knowing that they were part of this whole chain of events. Hmm, I like that idea. So a shopper then goes, I assume, to a local church. Well, in Austin, we've been doing it about five years. Mm -hmm. And correct, we have been a local church that has had it, and then we had asked other churches to contribute with our church, and then they've decided to have their own markets. So I think now in Austin, we're up to about five or so markets that are happening here. Um, my understanding is in 1986 or 88, they were up to about 115 nationwide. So that there are a number of uh, churches that do this, organizations, they can be whatever organization you want to have can have these markets. And they send out a packet, they're very simple to have, they tell you exactly how to order the cards and how to, how to um, set up the markets and everything. So if anybody wanted to have one, it can be as small as you want, it can be as big as you want. We started off real small, we've grown over the years to a very moderate size, so it's very manageable. We have it in one day, the people come and they decorate their booths the day before, and then that day, the event, we set it all up. We have the event, it's about two hours, then we break everything down. So, and then the funds are raised, and then we send them back to California. The people who staff these booths, say at the market in your local church, are they um, staff members of Alternate Gift Market? Or who, who are these folks that are there helping the shoppers? They're just church members. It's usually volunteers. And that's how, again, the 100% of your gift can go back, is that everybody that's involved in this really wants to have it be a non-materialistic type event. They really want these objects to go back to these recipients worldwide and to have them benefit. So it's all done on a volunteer basis. And it's not a lot of time as well. It's a whole lot easier to get a volunteer that says, I'll volunteer for an hour or two hours, and that's all they've got. And so you have like, you know, a couple of organizers and that kind of thing, and then you have the event so it doesn't take a lot of time but it really goes a long way I think it's something that I've really really thought was important a good holiday present for the recipients exactly. now who are some of these recipient organizations you you've mentioned eye surgery what other kinds of things are available uh, let's see last year they had water buffalo for untouchable women in India they've had uh, water wells in Uzbekistan this year um, let's see here, they've had, uh, they had housing for toddlers in Mexico. That was a very popular one. You can buy trees in rainforests because they're diminishing the rainforests. Seedlings for reforesting uh, uh, Haitian um, areas because they're, they're cutting down their trees so mm -hmm. fast that they um, are having problems with rain. So it's, it's, they go everywhere. They're doing all sorts of things, medical, surgery, uh, vaccinations for areas of the world that don't vaccinate their children, uh, teaching, education for kids in areas, uh, as well as here in, in, in the United States. They have food for the homeless. Uh, they have uh, housing for the homeless. They have education for um, people that are homeless. They have job training. So it's not just worldwide, but it is also domestic as well. And that, that's something that I think that, that they have worked hard on is because a lot of people say, boy, we really would like for some of our funds to go to some of the people here in the United States that don't have as much as, as, as the rest of us. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a worldwide thing. What's the minimum amount of a gift? A dollar. It can be as little as a dollar and as much as you know as you want you know the recipients the, the people that give give of themselves you know it's it's uh, how much they want to contribute and how much they want to be able to show you can buy a whole water buffalo if you want so so you could give say twenty dollars uh, to honor aunt pearl and buy seedlings for a reforestation project correct correct that's exactly right now, how does the national organization choose the organizations that are the recipients then on the local level? They go into these different areas and they check to see which particular organizations have very, very good track records with regards to the funds that they receive being distributed to the actual 
uh, designated folks that are supposed to be out there to receive them. And so they screen them every year, as well as the fact that some organizations get enough money every year. They might have an incredible uh, advertising, or, or not advertising, but um, view in the public eye. And so a lot of funds can be generated that direction, whereas other years they may not. So some years we'll see repeats, some years we won't. Um, and as well as if they find out that one of the organizations isn't working out as well, they'll pull them. They won't let them, you know, uh, be on their list. So they're, they, they do really, really watch what they're doing so that they're sure that 100% of the funds that come into them go to the organizations. And then those funds are actually used for the designated items. What do you think is the particular appeal for church people, for people of any religious faith, to participate in something like the alternate gift market? Well, I think for myself personally and being a church member I think that it goes back to the giving of oneself at Christmas time I think that that was really what was meant about Christmas it's it's the uh, the true meaning or, or giving in, in, in the actual uh, aspect of, of the spirit of Christmas it doesn't need to be an object it can be it can be uh, a, a giving of yourself volunteering or not volu you know it, those kinds of issues become very very intense I think and very focused at the holiday time because of the fact that we don't we take those things for granted very often mm -hmm. so you can focus in on that and so it, it is giving of oneself and so it, other people benefit that really need to benefit from these things. And what does the organization, the national organization, see uh, for the future, perhaps expanding beyond the holiday season to offer this kind of alternative throughout the year? I think that they do, um, they do have them periodically throughout the year. Um, I think that the holiday time is, again, a little more focused time where people can actually um, show that particular um, giving time but I think also uh, they I, I think they want to more word of mouth or generate it so that people that want to participate in these things can do that um, and again we've had people in our congregation that have gone off to new congregations in different parts of the country that started there and started there so it begins to mushroom all over the place and uh, people that can want to do it this way can participate this way um, Mm -hmm. It is important for, for those of us who come from a faith background to see that how we spend our money can have a difference, not only at the holiday season, but, but throughout the year. It's nice to know that there are these alternatives to depersonalized shopping, a, a chance to really make a difference in, in the world. Correct. So y you'll still be participating, I guess, in the sixth annual yes, yes. event at, at your to. local church. Yes. Well, thank you, Stuart, for coming to visit with us today and talking with us about this way that, that we, people of faith, can make a difference with our giving. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. We're out of time for today, unfortunately. I'd like to thank both our guests, Kathy Reed, pastor of the Austin Mennonite Church, and Stuart McIntyre of University Presbyterian Church for coming to discuss these programs with us. On behalf of Austin Metropolitan Ministries, I'm Sandy Wilder. Thank you for joining us, and I invite you back same time next week on Austin Faith Dialogue. Metropolitan Ministries at 472-7626.